Hello everyone and welcome back to my studio. My name is Tom Brown and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this miniature straight razor. So if you can see in this clip, it's a very lightly etched Damascus steel and uh, it is a razor sharp, although not quite sharp enough yet to shave with. Uh, so if anybody has any tips for me on how to get a blade that sharp, please leave me a comment below. So a while back I purchased this scrap Damascus from a knife maker. I think I got a pound of it for $10 on eBay. And this is really useful for me because all of the things that I make are very tiny. And so a little bit goes a long way. Um, what I've been doing with it is I've been cutting out little pieces wherever there's a profile that really nicely fits something that I need. And I noticed a profile on this scrap that really nicely uh, fit the shape of a straight razor. So one thing you'll note in my studio is that uh, I often choose very labor intensive ways to work. Uh, you might be screaming at me in the, <laughs> in the screen to use a cutoff wheel or something like that, but I really like the manual ways of working, physical ways of working. And I do find some ways to make it easier. You notice that I heated this metal before cutting it. And that has the effect of annealing it to soften it and make the cut uh, quite a bit easier. Uh, conversely, it does mean that I will also have to re-harden the metal at the end of the process. So there we go, now we have the basic profile of a straight razor. Now the next step for me is um, smoothing out the edges and making this profile really nice. Uh, one thing you will see shortly is the second stage of working with this Damascus steel, which is that it's quite thick. So you can see here that this shape this way looks really nice, but when we rotate it over this way, it's, it's quite a bit thicker than it needs to be. And when I first got this Damascus, that was a huge issue for me because I couldn't grind that much steel away in a practical amount of time. But then I realized that you can just split it right down the middle. And not only does it become thin enough, that it leaves me with two knife blanks. So when I make this, um, I'm actually making two straight razors. So this reference razor is one that was given to me by a friend of mine. It was her grandfather's and her mom gave it to me. Her mom follows me on Instagram and uh, thought that someday I might like to make a miniature straight razor and so I should have one in my studio that I can use as a reference. And it actually did come in very handy for this project. So thank you so much Claire and Shelly. Now you can see me beginning the split cut here. This is probably the most difficult uh, part of the process and this is the part where the most can go wrong. If I were to flex the blade from one side to the other a little bit too much, I might crack the steel and lose one of my uh, lose one of my straight razor blades and then also lose the guide of the other blade that helps keep the cut straight. So I took this cut uh, very slow, very carefully. And you can see the channel is really starting to deepen. We're getting into the blade. I'm really holding my breath here. <laughs> and not only that, my arms are starting to get uh, a little tired. And there we go. They're split. So you can see the pattern of the Damascus on this side of the metal and the other side is just the rough pattern left by the hacksaw blade. But 
the shape is really starting to look nice. Now one thing that was a trick that I only figured out recently to something that is a, a perennial difficulty for me in my studio is how do I clamp these tiny blades so that I can grind them. A lot of knife makers will hold the knife in their hand, hold it in pliers, or have some sort of specialized larger clamp that they can use while they grind their blades. But because these ones are so tiny, uh, it, I found it very difficult to hold them in place and it made the process of actually grinding the contour for the blade very time consuming. And just recently I was actually watching a video, a uh, quick spring video, and I noticed that he temporarily mounts things to surfaces when he's working on them, oftentimes using pitch or super glue. And I thought, wow, that is brilliant. I should be doing that in my studio. And I've been testing it out over the past few weeks and it works amazingly. So I'm basically temporarily mounting this knife in place using super glue so that I can grind the profile of the blade securely. It helps me be a lot more accurate. So what I do next is I mount this board to the edge of my workspace just using clamps. And then I set into it uh, with a variety of files. So I'm just cleaning it up right now with a triangle file. And now using a larger burr rasp, which I find is really useful for removing a large quantity of metal. And as you watch this part, you'll see me working my way down through a variety of rasps and files that I've collected over the years. Uh, eventually trying to make a bit of a hollow grind on this blade, which I'll explain later. So right now I'm trying to get a really close look at the edge and I'm taking it very slowly because when you're sharpening or pardon me grinding the blade on something that um, you're intending to get this sharp you really want to go slow when it comes to the edge because it can go so fast where you make a little mistake and you cut a chip out of the edge or you grind it a little bit too far and uh, I would hate to have that happen at this point so I'm going very very slowly. Now I finished the first one and I'm moving on to the second one. One reason I like working in pairs like this is because it gives me a chance to make um, the mistakes or learn the techniques when I'm working on the first one. Uh, because very rarely do I make repeats of projects. Often they're uh, simply one-offs, um, explorations. So now you can see me heating the blades to remove them. Uh, heating them will release the super glue. I guess I changed my mind there and I wanted to just polish that one up a little bit more. are both out of the wood with the profile of the blades ground nicely. So the next step is to regrind the back side of the blade and get it polished. 
and take the blades themselves all the way down to uh, sapphire stone. So starting at 400 grit, moving my way all the way up to a 3000 grit paper and down to a, a spider co sapphire stone which I think is like uh, potentially 5000 maybe even as much as 7000 grit. So quite fine, you can get uh, quite a nice mirror edge. Now to make the uh, handles, I have these guitar picks in my studio that I really wanted to use but they just weren't long enough. So instead what we'll be using is this salvaged piece from the tailstock of a broken guitar that um, I have in my studio. So it's a totally broken guitar and I've slowly been taking pieces from it as I need them. And I think that this uh, this will work quite nicely to make the scales for these knives. Now when working with salvage material like this, there's a little bit of measurement that goes into it, but sometimes you can't be too fancy and you just gotta go for it. And hope that it all works out. kind of lost focus for this part. Uh, I was getting a little bit tired and I didn't get all the action on camera so I apologize for that. But what I'm doing here is I'm drilling holes in the scales and I'm working this very thin copper tube through. So the copper tube is a really useful material here for peening the rivets as you saw in the deep fryer video. Basically expanding both ends of the metal so that it clamps the entire um, structure together by providing a force on either side. And you can see my little tube cutter just a second ago cutting a slightly thicker copper tube that I used to make a spacer on the other end of this knife. And there we go. This is the rough shape with the knife attached. Uh, the tubes still need to be ground. The profile of the scales still needs to be set, but it's starting to look like a straight razor. And it's at points like this in the projects where I really have to start getting creative with the ways that I do things because I don't want to disturb the finish on the knife. Uh, but I do still have a lot of material to remove from the handles. So I'm going to be taking it very carefully and I'm going to be doing a lot of different methods of material removal and refinement. starting to take it up through the finest of the grits that I have available to me in my studio, which means that these are the finishing touches. And there we have them. Two miniature straight razors and a solid day's work. Now one thing you might be wondering is what do I do with these objects once I've made them? Uh, and to answer that question, I do publish about them on social media through this platform called Finders Keepers, where I hide one of the objects in public, post the video of myself hiding it, this is the video, and whoever finds it gets to keep it. Now most of the hides have been done in my hometown of Calgary, Alberta, but I've done hides all around the world. And uh, I've done over 120 hides, all with objects similar to this. And I haven't really posted about it on YouTube, but I'm going to start. And maybe you, my YouTube viewers, can be the lucky finder of one of my hidden objects someday. 
So there you have it. This is the process of how I made this miniature straight razor. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support me, it's as simple as subscribing to my videos and telling your friends about it. But I appreciate you being here no matter what. Thank you.